Security tries to lock everything down. Interface designers try to make everything easy to use. It looks like security and usability are two players in a zero-sum game. Making something secure inevitably makes it hard to use, and making something easy to use inevitably makes it less secure. Hi, I'm Ilya, the founder of Elekin, a product design agency for SaaS. In today's video, I'll explain how to create a simple-to-use app without sacrificing its security. A cybersecurity guy I know once told me that a computer can be truly safe only when it's unplugged and buried 20 feet underground. Users are the main vulnerability in any system, so security experts' pipe dream is to hide their client system away from everyone. UX designers have dramatically different dreams. Designers believe the user journey through the web app should be smooth and easy. They evangelize users' needs and they are those who prevent security experts from burying computers underground. Can you feel this tension between designers and security? But security and usability can coexist. To debunk the mythical relationship between the two, we need to consider three statements. People don't care about security. Security is not equal to locking everything down. Design is not equal to making making things easy. Let's start from the top. People don't care about security. That is not entirely true. They care, but from a long-term perspective. Everyone wants their personal data and property to be safe. That's why people set up expensive door locks and security cameras. But bumping into a sudden security notification is something different. Something that can be pretty irritating. Because at a particular moment when you open a particular app, you're doing it for a reason. And the reason is not security, but the job that has to be done. And a sudden pop-up that tells you your connection is probably somewhat insecure is a dusty little roadblock between you and your goal. People don't care about roadblocks. They look for ways around roadblocks and always find them. What if a door you often use requires an Android badge that you don't have? You'd probably find a brick and use it to keep the door open. If your employer forces you to reset passwords every month, chances are that you'll write them down on sticky notes so you don't forget them. An average person has passwords from 100 different accounts. 100 is too many to remember, so it's hardly surprising that people either use very simple passwords or have a few and reuse them for all accounts. When security is something that obstructs the process, people won't find a workaround. Make something too secure and it becomes less secure. We can conclude that building security walls in front of people trying to do their job doesn't work, but there are other approaches that do work. Here comes our next statement. Security doesn't equal locking everything down. There is UX security that doesn't lock anything. It keeps users safe and stays invisible for them. The evolution of CAPTCHA is a perfect illustration of how it is possible. The first tech CAPTCHAs were insoluble for both humans and bots. The next generation of CAPTCHAs with pictures where you had to select bicycles buses or traffic lights was better, but they still made you feel like you're wasting your life. Then Google presented its I'm not a robot checkbox that let us a sigh of relief. And as a final point, Google gave us no capture recapture that makes you do literally nothing to prove that you're human. Malicious bots don't necessarily watch cat videos on YouTube before proceeding with their malicious business. So if Google AI believes your previous internet behavior appears to be human, it doesn't make you lift a finger. Only if Google Google is still unsure of your true nature, it will make you solve capture as an additional security measure. But not all security features can be made invisible, like capture. You often need users to perform some action. When you ask them to create strong passwords or enable two-factor authentication, it obviously creates roadblocks on the user journeys. Yet the feelings caused by those roadblocks fully depend on the design. Remember the last time an app asked you to create a complex password? It probably made you read a long list of requirements and question your life choices. And that's if you are lucky. If you are not, the long requirements list appeared only after you coined your password. To say your password is invalid because it lacks an uppercase letter, a number, a hieroglyph, and the feather from a hawk. In this latter case, the interface violates the key principle of human-centered design – visibility. Users should know, just by looking at the interface, what the options are and how to access them. If they don't know the rules of the game, the error notification turns 
a little password roadblock into an irritating blockage of their way. We can definitely do better. Look at MailChimp's elegant solution to the password problem. First, they have all requirements laid out, so you don't have to play a guessing game. Second, requirements update as you type. The way the list grays out items as users type is a great example of a system giving users clear and instant feedback on their actions. Follow simple design for security principles and you will minimize the nuisance value of your security measures. Here comes out our third statement. Design doesn't equal making things easy. Some things are intended to be easy to use but are not. Other things are deliberately difficult to use and ought to be. You cannot tell one from the other unless you understand a specific user's intent at a specific time in a specific place. Such mindfulness is difficult to get. To understand designers so deeply, designers need to address the whole design thinking cycle. To run user research, then crystallize all the findings in the user personas and user journeys. Make prototypes based on those findings and run user testing to observe what users actually do when using your digital products. If you don't have the mood for fooling around real users' intents and want to start designing right now, you might decide to start with the assumption that users want everything to be easy. That's a pretty logical but sometimes wrong assumption. Proved by Citibank. A few years ago, Citibank was trying to make $7.8 million in interest payments. It sent $900 million instead, and it was recognized as one of the biggest blunders in banking history. How does something like that happen? It all went wrong because a responsible person failed to check two extra boxes in a form. Let's take a look at the form. The screen looks like it came from the early 90s, which is a problem on its own. The interface obviously violates the principle of visibility and feedback. When you're looking at a form, you have no idea how to make the required payment. When you wonder what happened and what does it mean, the interface remains mysteriously silent. All set for a huge mistake. But what is more interesting is how the system reacts to inevitable mistake. When you try to transfer the amount that is 100 times more than usual, that's an atypical behavior. So atypical that Google would suspect you're a bot and offer to solve a capture. If Citibank's interface has suspected that something went wrong, it would have shown a digital box asking whether you really want to transfer near 1 billion. If you didn't meant to, you'd decline the action and the day would be probably saved. But it looked like nothing that happened because because three people reviewed the parameters of Citibank's fatal payment and okayed them without a doubt. Citibank's system is obviously overcomplicated if we look at its interface, but it's oversimplified in terms of security. If you had asked Citibank on that doomsday whether they'd like to have one little cybersecurity UX design roadblock preventing them from blindly okaying atypical operations, they would have definitely said yes. The clever design should draw users' attention to peak moments in their experience. Experience. MailChimp illustrates this point perfectly. You cannot unsend a send email. That's why the moment you press the send now button is very tense, even if your email has only one recipient. Not to mention email campaigns aimed at thousands of people. At this peak moment, MailChimp shows you a know how you feel little stressed monkey's hand. It emotionally connects the brand with its users and gently encourages people to be mindful when pressing the button. Time to wrap up our security design principles. People don't care about security. Make something too secure and they will find a way to bypass it. Security doesn't equal locking everything down. If you want people to stick to your security measures, you should ideally make them invisible. If you can't, use UX design to make them feel less like obstacles blocking users on their user journeys. Design doesn't equal making things easy. If you find yourself making everything fast and easy, you'd probably need to understand users' intent deeper. Sometimes you need to slow people down to highlight what's important. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. If this story was useful, please like, share and subscribe for more videos on business and design. See you soon.